In this video, we're going to be working with the Leaflet API to create a choropleth map like this one, um, showing the vaccination rate in Washington State counties as of May 18, 2021. Uh, Leaflet is a free and open source uh, JavaScript based API for interactive mapping. And we're just going to use a GeoJSON file, uh, which I've uh, gathered of uh, Washington counties. And I have enhanced this uh, with some population data from the Washington Office of Financial Management and uh, some vaccination data from the Washington State uh, COVID-19 data dashboard. And uh, I just uh, brought this data into QGIS and saved it as a GeoJSON file. Uh, you can see the different fields in it. Um, so if we open the attribute table, uh, you'll see that it has a number of people fully vaccinated as of uh, the 18th of May and then the estimated population of the county, and then a percentage that I've derived just by dividing one by the other. And I've just saved that out of QGIS as a GeoJSON file with the uh, EPSG4326, or just geographic coordinates with uh, WGS84. That's why it's uh, stretched here uh, horizontally, but Leaflet will project it on the fly to match the base map. We're just going to use an open street map base map on the bottom here. And you notice that as we hover over the counties, we're going to get a little report in the upper right of the percent vaccinated. And then the lower right, we're going to have a legend that shows us uh, what, the, what the colors mean. Now, the way that we will do this is by adapting a sample uh, a tutorial from Leaflet. Actually, I'm going to use pieces of two of these. One of them is right on the front page, just showing how to get OpenStreetMap into Leaflet. And the code is just right here with a leaflet tile layer uh, pointing at the OpenStreetMap tile server on the background. Uh, but the bulk of the code is going to come from this uh, tutorial uh, that's been on this site for years of how to do an interactive choropleth map. And uh, the reason I'm making this video is just showing how to adapt uh, this sample to your own GeoJSON data, which uh, there's a lot of JavaScript in here for a beginner and it could look a little intimidating. So I want to demonstrate how to do that. This one is just showing population density, uh, and it's got a bunch more categories than what we're going to use. So we're going to have to tweak this just a little bit, as well as adjusting the extent of the map and some of the, the color. Um, if we go to look at this example standalone, uh, we can right click and uh, look at the code. So we just view the page source, and uh, we could take a look at how this is structured. Uh, that can be helpful before we start adapting it. Um, I'll see if I can make this text a little bit larger here. Uh, this will work. So um, you notice at the top, uh, we can adjust the title as needed. It's referencing the Leaflet API and the style sheet uh, through a content delivery network, a CDN. Um, we can use this as well. Uh, it's got a little bit of styling information that define the size of the map div and stuff like that. So if we wanted to resize and put other HTML elements in the page, uh, we could mess around with this. Um, it's pointing here at a uh, the GeoJSON. This is uh, contained for this sample in a file called usstates.js. So if we hit this, um, it's referencing this GeoJSON file. And um, we're going to have to tweak our GeoJSON that came out of QGIS just, just a little bit to match this. So uh, we'll have to, we're going to rename it with a .js extension. And we've got to make a JavaScript variable here that it can be referenced. So requires a little bit of adjustment to get this data to work. Uh, so that's something I'll demonstrate. Um, we got a map coming in here that we set the view on uh, with the coordinates and the zoom level. I'm gonna, we're going to pull in the open street map tiles like I showed instead of these map box ones. Um, other stuff that we can adjust, uh, this in the upper right hover box, this is just HTML. And we can bring in different attributes here uh, from our GeoJSON, so that won't be too hard. Notice here, here's where our uh, colors are coming in. We can define all those using these HTML uh, color codes. Uh, that'll be great. Um, and really nothing uh, super complicated here. Uh, it's just knowing all the pieces to modify. And if you miss a few, then it's not going to turn out right. So then you have to adjust. So I'm going to walk through this. Uh, we'll create a GeoJSON layer and point at our GeoJSON for the, the counties here. We've got to adjust this. Uh, we can adjust the attribution and uh, the legend categories. Uh, so let's do this. Um, I'm going to close our example here. And what we'll start with is um, actually let's go start with that uh, GeoJSON. So we've 
Uh, as I mentioned, we've got to adjust it. So I'm going to open this in uh, Notepad++ here. Here's our original GeoJSON that came out of QGIS. And I've got to call this, um, i got to make a variable here. So I'm going to say var vax data equals, uh, so I'm taking all this GeoJSON and calling it a, a variable name. And because I've introduced this line of code, and this is going to be saved as JavaScript, I have to put a semicolon at the end. So I'll just do that. And then I'm going to save this thing with a .js extension. Okay, instead of a .geojson. And you can reference uh, .js files in your, your JavaScript code as shown in that example. Uh, here, look, it colorized it now that we changed it to uh, JavaScript. That's great. Uh, every, this looks okay. Um, now we need to create a new file here that will hold our code. So we'll just go up here and create a text document. And I'm going to call this um, uh, leaflet example dot HTML. Make sure it doesn't have a dot txt extension. Okay. And uh, let's drop this into Notepad++ as well. And uh, I'm just going to copy all of the code out of this uh, example and paste it into here. So I want to make sure I get everything. It's, uh, it's colorized it. That looks good. Um, and so we're just going to make some modifications from the, the top down here. Oh, and I want to be able to test this stuff uh, by running it repeatedly. And so I need to... Um, uh, temporarily disable the unique uh, origin policy. So uh, if I go to about.config in Firefox, uh, accept the risk and uh, search for unique origin. I've already disabled it on my browser because I was doing some development on here just uh, an hour or two ago. But if this says true, then just hit this button and change it to false while you're working on this code. And then uh, later you can change it back. What this does is it allows um, your HTML file that you're you're going to be accessing off the file system to look at these other uh, files that are in the same uh, folder. And if you don't do that, then your code is just not going to load. Uh, you won't be able to test it in this way. You would have to go put it on a web server to test it, which, um, which we're not going to do right now. So um, let's go ahead and start tweaking this code and see if we can get it to run. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the title here. We, we don't want it to say Core Plus Tutorial at the top. Uh, maybe something like uh, percent of people fully vaccinated in Washington counties. That looks better. Um, I haven't figured out what this uh, link is going to, but it was giving me errors. So, you know, the way you comment out something like this in HTML is you can do this sort of thing. So you have a start and end comment. I'm not going to use that, this little link. Uh, so little um, less than sign, exclamation, dash, dash, and then a dash, dash, greater than at the end. So this, this part will be ignored. Um, I, the errors were just kind of getting in my way there. I don't have this file on my machine, favicon.ico. Um, now let's go down um, here. We're not going to mess around with the style sheets, but I did change the name of this, uh, so this is where we're going to reference that JavaScript file. And I called it, uh, let's make sure I've got the right name, uh, wa underscore counties underscore may underscore 18. So i got to make sure I match that. Alrighty, so now it's, uh, now it's referencing that JavaScript file, not the states one. And uh, we've got to center it on Washington State. Let's put it uh, right in the middle here. So the first one is going to be um, the latitude. Um, we'll put it, we'll center this right on our favorite university here. Uh, and then maybe put the zoom level at like six or something. I think we can, I think we can adapt from there um, once we test it. If it's off, we can zoom it in or out as needed. And then uh, instead of these map box tiles, uh, let's bring in the OpenStreetMap tiles. So I mentioned that that was going to be um, in, um, let me go back. If we go on the very first overview page of Leaflet, there's that little example right here. And uh, we can just copy this little snippet of code and paste it in. That should work just fine. 
uh, for bringing in that tile layer. So I'm going to replace this tile layer code that gets the map box tiles and we'll put open street map tiles. Okay. Now at this point, I'm not sure if I can run this. I may still have things that are not wired up, so I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we can, uh, we can try it. Okay. So run early, run often. Um, there's our open street map tiles and we're centered on Washington. So we've got a good start. The GeoJSON is not loading in. We're probably getting errors related to that, which uh, rather than trying to debug those with the, the console right now, let's just keep walking through the code and, and wiring up things that are obvious that we need to, that we need to fix there. What we're doing is I'm uh, going to go through here and look for stuff that's data specific and try and try and update and fix it. So, uh, for example, right here, instead of U.S. population density, we want to um, we want to name this something else. This is in the hover box that's in the upper right. So we'll just say percent uh, fully vaccinated. And then um, where we see props or properties, uh, that is where we're going to be pulling in attributes out of our GeoJSON file. So I want to show um, the county name. And if, if we want a cheat sheet, we can go back to our GeoJSON and QGIS and look at what we called that. Um, I think I called it uh, county underscore NM, and this is going to be in all caps. So we can try this sort of thing. And then um, for the uh, percent vaccinated, uh, that was PT Vax May 18th. I want to round this uh, uh, so that it looks nice uh, rather than getting a decimal. Um, so there is a JavaScript round function that I'm going to use for that. And I'm going to multiply by 100 and then just round it off. Um, so I don't have any uh, decimals on it. And let's change this to hover over accounting. Let's see if this uh, did anything. We can just refresh. Okay, see this percent fully vaccinated hover over accounting. However, the GeoJSON is not loaded in yet because I haven't, I haven't fully wired that up. So we got to keep going here and uh, making some modifications. Um, here, uh, we're going to need to set up our uh, legend categories, and uh, we're only going to have a few of those. So we have zero down at the bottom, and let's say that we're going to do 20%, um, 30, I want to do 30%, 40%, and then 50 will be our top. Uh, that's because I'm, I'm familiar with this data range, so uh, that's what we're going to do with that. Oh, I put 500. I don't think that's going to be the best here. Okay, so we'll have five different colors. And I'm going to adjust these colors later. Uh, we'll just use the default ones for now. Um, one of the really key uh, lines that has to do with the styling here is this one, where uh, there's it's a, somebody wrote a little JavaScript function here to go get the color based on the attribute value that was uh, returned. And we need to get the percentage here and compare it against this color list. So what we're going to do right here, uh, whoops. So we had feature.properties, and we need to get a PT Vax May 18th, like we did before. And uh, because I set these up as these uh, big rounded numbers uh, that were uh, percentages, I need to invoke that math.round function again. And it may seem tedious to do this again, but if I don't do it here, I'm going to have to do it a bunch of places below. So I just want to do it here. And then from, from there on, I can deal with these more user-friendly type of uh, percentages. Okay, and I could add spacing in here to make it look pretty. It doesn't really matter um, that much. Uh, so this is going to help the styling to, to work out. Okay, now... Um, we still haven't wired up the GeoJSON, so let's go down to that. We've got some functions that deal with feature highlighting and stuff, and I'm going to leave all that code. I don't need to mess around with that. I want all that functionality to happen. Uh, what's cool also in this sample is if you click a feature, it zooms to the feature, and we can leave that in here. Um, you can see this uh, fit bounds uh, function that's doing that. Um, also notice on each feature, as you mouse over, it's going to highlight, and there's functions for that. I'm going to leave all that code. What I'm going to focus on here is um, this, where it's creating the GeoJSON layer. 
Right now, that's pointing at my variable that I called states data. And remember, we called our, uh, when we made the JSON uh, or the JavaScript file with our GeoJSON, we called this vax data. So this is uh, the really the key place where I'm going to change it and point it at that variable. Now, how can it go and find that variable that's sitting in a totally different file? Uh, the reason is because up here, uh, we referenced that. So uh, right in this line of code 35, that's where we're pointing at this file. And that means we can use variables that are, uh, that are sitting in there when we link to the script like this. Let's see what we have now if we just run this or refresh it. Just hitting Control F5 to do a refresh. And lo and behold, uh, this layer has shown up. And uh, <laughs> you can see that we have people per square mile. That's, that's not an accurate label, so we'll have to figure that out. And we've got too many categories in this legend, so there's, there's still a few things we've got we've to gotta fix here. But that, that's all right. We can do that. Um, so we'll continue going, marching through the code here, figuring things out. Um, oh, the attribution control is the next thing listed here. Did you notice? Down at the bottom, it says Population Data U.S. Census Bureau. I want to change this so I can give credit to that uh, Washington uh, COVID portal, uh, data portal. So I'm just going to change the text in here, and we'll say um, we'll say something like vaccination data from Washington State Department of Health, um, Department of Health. And then we're just going to stick a little uh, HTML link tag in here. OK, and uh, we'll call this uh, COVID-19 data dashboard. And I uh, want to paste in the web address for that thing so that people can visit it if they want to. Just control C to copy it. And for the uh, HTML link tag here, I'm just going to paste this in the href. So that's a way I can uh, customize that attribution. Um, we should go ahead and test it here just by refreshing. See this down here? Very nice. We could test the hyperlink to you. Um, I won't do that now, but we, we should do that later just to make sure that it works. Um, now let's deal with all these legend categories. So we had too many of them, obviously. Uh, let's do zero. Um, we were going to do 20. 30, 40, and 50, we've just got this little list here, or array of values. And then we've got a function here that's going to um, look at that and pull the correct color for each one. And uh, it's kind of some little JavaScript trickery here to detect whether it's the last one or not um, uh, in the category. And if it is, it will put the plus. What we can do here is just tack on uh, percent and let's take a look at how that looks. All right, see our legend here? I like that. We've cut it down to the five categories, and they represent the ones that are in this map. Now, um, we've got a couple more things to do here uh, to improve on this. The biggest thing we need to fix is up here, this label when we hover is showing people per square mile. So let's go back and find out where that was. I'm just going to kind of visually scan this as I go up. Uh, here it is, people per uh, square mile. You can see this HTML superscript uh, tag that's uh, being used to put the two. Um, so we can do uh, percent, percent fully vaccinated. Let's try that and see how it looks. Again, just rerun here. It's a little redundant. We have fully vaccinated right above that. So, you know, maybe we can just delete that part. We have the percentage on there. And this is a percent of all people, not just uh, adults or anything like that. Uh, so we could make it longer if we wanted. The only problem is that box is going to get uh, wider. But I don't think it's too wide right now. That's fine. Now, let's suppose we want to modify the color scheme. I don't like this red. I want to do something nice, uh, pleasant looking that's positive, like green, uh, uh, to reflect the vaccination. So uh, let's go to Color Brewer, and we can get some nice colors for this. I like to use this for uh, picking out color ramps. And uh, we, can, we have five classes. 
So you can set that here. And uh, I really like these greens. I think I'll go with that. This one, though, is a little too white. So um, I'm just going to do six and uh, ignore this lightest one. And um, notice that they have the hex values right here. So I'm just going to copy those into my code and make a really nice color ram. And look at all these other ones I could choose, too. Um, it's kind of fun. You can choose the one that you like the best. So I'm going to kind of set this up so that I can see both things here at the same time. That will make it easier for me to edit, for sure. And here's my color codes. Now I'm going to start with the darkest one. So I need to start down here. That's pound 006 D2C. You can maybe try to copy and paste here just to avoid errors. That's working pretty well. If you skip one, you're going to know it when you look at your map, or if you accidentally repeat one, which I've seen happen as well. Um, and I've, when I've been typing these, I've switched numbers before, and you wind up with a totally different color that you didn't expect. So let's try it out. If we refresh that um, map now, hopefully we'll see those green colors. Excellent. And uh, we could change the opacity as well. This is pretty, uh, you can kind of see through this quite a bit. Uh, if I wanted to make it a little darker, um, you can hunt for that. That's the fill opacity here. So maybe I make it like 85% uh, uh, opaque, 15% transparent. A little bit darker green there. Help me to see the pattern in the core plot map. Um, I guess I could default it to this zoom level. It's a little bit obscured by this stuff, though. But um, I think everything here is working, and we've adapted this sample. And notice we can test it out as we click. We zoom to the county, and we've got our own legend categories. So, uh, further things you could do to customize, um, you could put your own uh, content here on this web page, uh, your own text. Um, you could further adjust uh, the way that the legend looks or some of the text that uh, goes into this box in the upper right. If you had lots of other attributes on the county, you could report them in that box. It might be nice. Um, and so this has been just a little walkthrough on how to create a Coropleth map with Leaflet and a GeoJSON file.